Hello, my name is Brian Casey. I'm editor-in-chief of AntMini.com, and we're here at the 2018 edition of the RSNA meeting in Chicago. We have with us right now Dr. Andrew Rosenkrantz. He is a radiologist with NYU Langone Health. Andrew, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So uh, one of the big issues right now in radiology is the issue of payment reform, um, whether the old fee-for-service uh, way of paying for radiology services is really uh, the best model we can use going forward, and maybe what some alternatives to that are. Uh, Andrew, can we talk a little bit about what's going on in payment reform, and, and, and why is there pressure to change the way that radiology services are being paid? Uh, so we may, may almost even say there's a crisis going on in this area, in this area, um, and this, uh, so Medicare payments have been really skyrocketing over recent decades, um, going up by over an order of magnitude, um, greatly outpacing growth in inflation and the gross domestic product. We're now spending about ten thousand um, dollars per year uh, per person for healthcare services in the U.S. And the percentage, and, as a percentage of GDP, it's far ahead of any other developed country. Correct. So it's approaching about one-fifth of the GDP, and it's estimated uh, within about a decade, uh, the Medicare trust fund, trust fund will be bankrupt. Um, so this is a pending crisis. I, I think we're spending all this money, and we're, the data isn't really showing we're getting value for that money, that our health outcomes, our endpoints for patients, are uh, actually lagging behind many other countries for a wide range of markers of healthcare quality, and I think something needs to be done about it. Okay. So with respect to, to payment reform, what are some of the major alternatives that are out there that are being discussed? Uh, so, uh, so there's uh, things being done about this on numerous fronts. Um, I, I think really trying to shift us from fee-for-service into new payment models focused on value rather than paying for volume or individual services rendered. The government has really been trying to lead the charge in this uh, through legislation as well as regulatory activities uh, coming from CMS. And I think private payers are also now following suit um, to really, I think, uh, reform the way they pay for healthcare with the idea that healthcare payments can actually be a driver of practice as the payments evolve it'll really change what we do in response. Okay. So I've, I've heard a lot of things like MACRA, MIPS, and, and acronyms like that that describe some of these different payment models. Just real quickly, what are some of the, the, the bigger ones that we're, we're seeing in radiology? Uh, so MACRA is legislation that Congress passed in 2015 uh, that really uh, seeks to be the seminal legislation of our generation for um, reforming Medicare payments and uh, it, it's active now. It actually, the, the, chain, the payment program it led to went live in 2017, and it uh, basically uh, consolidated earlier Medicare uh, value-based payment programs to a more uh, comprehensive uh, program that uh, it, it basically divides our payments into two pathways. There, it has a MIPS, or a modified fee-for-service pathway, that over the coming years will increasingly tie higher and higher percentages of our payments to our performance in a spectrum of categories that include a whole number of activities and, and metrics, as well as alternative payment mo advanced alternative payment models that eventually wants to try to incentivize physicians to participate in um, with these alternative payment models really being where we want to go in terms of population management, care coordination, I mean, I think uh, kind of more an ultimate system to, to really achieve value at a, um, you know, get quality at a lower cost. Now, is it going to be difficult for radiology practices to, um, to, to follow a lot of these new rules? Uh, so that's a good question. I think some of this will be difficult for all physicians, not just radiologists. Um, I mean, historically, I think a lot of programs from Medicare have been Certainly, all their payment models have been developed with primary care physicians in mind, and sometimes they've had initiatives that weren't always as well tailored to specialists, in particular radiologists. I, I think they're aware of this, and they are, I think, trying to do things in a way that, that where they haven't before, where in terms of really partnering with specialty societies, partnering with leadership from, from various specialties to work together for, um, uh, I think better developed metrics, if not whole programs or payment models, but that's still a challenge. Um, I think the 
I think they they recognize the need uh, to be to really reflect you know the variation in physician practice that the role that what we do is really different than what other physicians do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they're moving in that direction, but it's still very much a work in progress. Sure. Now, you're uh, moderating a session on Thursday on, on payment reform. Can you talk a little bit about what some of the specific things are going to be discussed there? Yeah, so uh, we have a session uh, this Thursday afternoon on healthcare payment reform and radiology, and we'll be touching on many of these issues. So uh, we'll actually have four talks from current leaders in this space in radiology. So uh, Dr. Kimberly Applegate will be speaking on quality measurement in radiology, what the current quality measures are that CMS is using and how we can uh, do well in those measures to do well in our payments. Uh, uh, Dr. Greg Nicola will be speaking ab actually about uh, MACRA and MIPS. He's the ACR's uh, MACRA committee chair and a guru in the topic and has worked directly with CMS in developing the, uh, in, in some, giving feedback and some aspects of it as it pertains to radiology. Uh, and then we have a uh, talk from Dr. David Levin on price transparency, um, which is another big aspect of this section, making the information available to the consumers, letting patients know how much they're paying for, you know, say an MR, you could get it, you know, knee MR, 10 different centers in your area, and you want to pick where to go, and, you know, how good is the information out there, how can we get better information to make informed decisions. And then the final talk will be by uh, Dr. Jerry McGinty, actually on, um, breast screening, breast cancer screening bundles. We talked about having new payment models that are relevant to radiology, and I think one area that's really stood out and where our specialty is putting a lot of effort on this is in uh, screening mammography and how to make uh, alternative payment model for radiologists. You know, that, that's when we're really front and center in terms of patient-centered care, doing the initial imaging, and then doing the biopsy, maybe making recommendations of, about management, really coordinating things across specialists. Um, so, so that should be a great, a great session. Good. All right. Well, that is on Thursday, correct? Correct. Thursday afternoon, 4.30 p.m. All right. Very good. Well, Andrew, thanks again for being with us. No, thanks for having me. All right. Uh, signing off for AntMindy.com, my name is Brian Casey.